When I explained the EUTXU model in the first lecture, I explained that the validator, a Pluto script that serves as a validator, receives three pieces of information. The datum, which comes from the producing transaction and is part of the UTXO that we want to consume. The redeemer, which comes from the consuming transaction, is part of the input that wants to consume that UTXO and the context. And we saw datum and redeemer being used in the second lecture when I gave some very simple examples of validators. But so far in our examples, we have ignored the third input, namely the context. And in the first lecture, I explained that there are several choices. Bitcoin, for example, has a very small context. So in Bitcoin, Bitcoin scripts only see the UTXO to be consumed and the redeemer. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have something like Ethereum, which has a global view at the blockchain. So the complete state of the blockchain is in principle accessible to a Solidity script on Ethereum. And I said that Cardano chooses a middle way where the context is the transaction being validated. So in Plutus, the validator can see the datum, the redeemer, and the transaction being validated with all its inputs and outputs. So your intuition should be something like this picture for the context, the third argument the validator receives. However, obviously in practice, this is implemented as a Haskell data type. And we will look at the Haskell data type, the script context next. When we open the documentation and search for script context, we see there are two versions, version one, version two. So in this course, we do version two. And we see that script context is a record type with two fields, the script context TX info of type TX info, and then the purpose. The purpose tells us in which context, for which purpose, the Pluto script in question is being used. So at the moment, we have only talked about the second purpose here, spending. So validators have the spending purpose. And you see an argument here, that's a TXOut ref, a reference to a UTXO, and that's the UTXO that's currently being validated. As you can see, there are three more possible purposes. The first one, minting, comes into play when we try to mint or burn a native token. We will talk about that in one of the next lectures. Rewarding is for withdrawing staking rewards and certifying is for issuing certificates. So for all these four purposes, Plutus can be used. The first field of the script context type is of type TX info. And this type contains all the information of a transaction that's available from inside Pluto script. So let's look at that type next. So we see this is again a record type with a variety of fields. Let's go through them in order. First, TX info, a list of TX infos. That's the inputs of the transaction, all the inputs of the transaction. And we see such an TX in info. It's again a record type with two fields, a TX out ref and TX out. TX out ref we encountered before when we looked at the purpose. So I told you that validators have purpose spending TX out ref, where TX out ref indicates the UTXO that is currently being validated. So such a TX out ref is basically a pointer on the blockchain to a specific transaction output. And you can see it's given by a pair consisting of a transaction ID and an integer. In Cardano, the outputs of a transaction are ordered. So they have a well-defined order and the index starts at zero. So the first output of a transaction has index zero, the second one has index one and so on. So you can uniquely identify 
the transaction output by given the identifier of the transaction, the TXID, the transaction hash, and the index of the output. And often this is written in textual form, for example, in the Cardano CLI, by first writing the hash, then a hash symbol, and then the index. The second component of something of type TX in info is of type TX out. So, of course, an input points to an output. So, this is the output the input points to. And if we look at the TX out type, we see it's again a record type, lots of record types here, with four fields the address at which the output sits, the value that it contains, so that can be ADA, but it can also be native tokens or a combination of ADA and various native tokens. Then the datum and optionally a script hash. Let's first look at the datum. I explained before that there are three ways on Cardano to attach a datum to an output. You can have no datum at all. For example, that's the normal case when you have an output at a pub key address. Although there it's also possible to optionally attach a datum. Then you can use an inline datum that we will by default do in this course, where the datum is directly contained in the output. And then you can just attach a datum hash to the output and then optionally put the datum into the transaction body or not. As for these reference scripts, that's possible since the Vasil hard fork that you can optionally, hence the maybe, attach a script to an output. And then later you can reference that script, hence the name reference script, from other transactions that want to make use of that script, which saves a lot of memory and makes transactions smaller. So this is how an input is described. Basically a pointer to the output that the input wants to consume and then a description of this output. So we have this list of inputs. And then the second field in the TX info type is of the same type. It's also a list of inputs. However, the purpose is different. This first field denotes normal inputs that the transaction will spend. So if the transaction is valid and get submitted to the blockchain and incorporated into a block, into the blockchain, then the inputs consumed here will no longer be UTXOs, will no longer be unspent, they will be spent. However, since the Vasil hard fork, it's also possible to have so-called reference inputs. So they are of the same type, but they don't get consumed by the transaction. So the transaction has access to them. So in particular, Pluto scripts can look at them and make use of the information, but the inputs will not be consumed. In particular, their validators will also not be executed. So these inputs, of course, can again sit at pub key addresses or at script addresses. And normally, if a transaction wants to spend the pub key address UTXO, the transaction has to be signed by the owner of the private key belonging to this pub key hash. If it's a script UTXO, then the validator will be executed. For reference inputs, you don't need the signatures or execution of validators. So they are just there for information and they are not spent by the transaction. And the nice thing about these reference inputs is that several transactions in the same block can use the same UTXO as reference inputs. Sometimes there's a bottleneck on Cardano if one UTXO carries some sort of state that a lot of participants are interested in. And if you have to consume this UTXO in order to do whatever you want to do, then there's contention for this one UTXO and only one transaction per block can consume this. If you manage to use reference inputs instead, so if you don't have to change any state, if you just have to look at it, then several transactions in the same block can use the same UTXO as reference input.
So that's the advantage of reference inputs. But as far as data types are concerned, they are of the same type. Next are the outputs of the transaction. And we see that's a list of TX outs. And we already saw this TX out type when we looked at the TX in input type. So we already know what outputs look like. The next field is the fee, the transaction fee of the transaction, again of type value. So again, it could be ADA or native tokens, but of course, at least at the moment, transaction fees on Cardano are always just ADA. This field denotes minting or burning of native tokens. I won't say anything more about this in this lecture, but in one of the following lectures, we'll look much more closely at native tokens and how minting and burning works. Next, we have a list of certificates. You can look at this desert type quickly. So here's a list of possible certificates. So this is if you register a staking credential. This is if you deregister a staking credential. This if with a registered staking credential you delegate to a stake pool. This is for registering a stake pool. This is for retiring a stake pool. This I'm not sure, but I assume it's only used once for the Genesis block. So right in the beginning of the blockchain. And this originally came from the ITN, the incentivized test net, but is also used for things like paying catalyst winners from the treasury. So this stands for move instantaneous rewards. So it's quite a rare occurrence and we won't say anything more about this in this course. Next we have withdrawals. So that's for withdrawing staking rewards. So it's a map from staking credentials that you withdraw from and the amount you withdraw. Then comes the time validity range of the transaction. We will cover that later in this lecture. Then a list of pubkey hashes that have signed this transaction. A map of redeemers, mapping from script purpose to redeemer. Then a map from datum hash to datum. So recall the three ways to attach datum to an output. And one of the ways was to just attach the hash, but quote the actual datum in the transaction. And that's exactly what this map is for. So in that case, the datum would be an entry in this map. And finally, the transaction ID of this transaction. 